on the interview is NUC Kenya leader and Kirinyaga gubernatorial candidate Martha Karua. Welcome to the show. Thank you. A one-time presidential candidate as well. Take us a little bit back, um, if you would, to the point where you decided that you were going to run for the Kirinyaga gubernatorial seat. What informed that decision? What informed that decision is that uh, I looked at all things and took into consideration all matters that I should have. And I decided I was not going to try the top seat this time. Yet I wanted to give service to the people of Kenya. And I chose Kirinyaga as the place. Because when I give service to the people of Kirinyaga, I'm giving service to Kenya. Mm -hmm. Because Kenya is made up of 47 counties. Kirinyaga being one of them. Yes. Okay. And why did you decide that you wouldn't go for the top seat this time round? When I took all factors into consideration, I decided this time round I should go for a gubernatorial seat and give my support to the incumbent, to President Uhuru, and his running mate for a second term. Okay, yeah. and we'll get into the, the details of why you made the decision to support the president. Uh, yeah. But what is your agenda for Kirinyaga? My agenda for Kirinyaga, first and foremost, is to safeguard the resources of Kirinyaga and then to optimally utilize them for the benefit of the people. We can break down into details of where to use them. Mm -hmm. But I believe for any governor, the first and foremost duty is to safeguard the resources and then to optimally use the land. Let's talk about Kirinyaga's resources. Which yeah. ones uh, do you see as primary um, to um, advancing what your, your agenda would be? I think it's a totality of resources. For instance, you cannot um, disregard human resource because even with all the financial and other resources, minus the human resource of the county, you wouldn't be able to advance. So when I talk about resources, I'm talking about human resource, I'm talking of financial resources, the other resources the county is endowed with, I'm talking about the whole, okay. the integral. Well, what challenges would you say the county currently faces? Like all other uh, counties, it's facing challenges in health, in agriculture, support services, which we call extension services, marketing or agribusiness if you like. We're facing challenges in the education sector, the infrastructure, which I believe is something the county ought to look at. And generally, the infrastructure, the roads, water services, to a lesser extent, electricity. But even though I say to a lesser extent, Anybody who is not yet connected, it's a big issue. Mm -hmm. And water, it's about the distribution, the management, like currently the management of um, Kirinyaga Water Company has been taken over by the national regulator mm -hmm. because the company was found incapable of delivering the service. This ought not to happen right. when there is a governor in the county. So I'm talking about all things dear. Mm -hmm. And the day-to-day -day issues of any citizen today are issues that are handled by the county. All right. Yes. Let, let's talk about the, the issue of agriculture and agribusiness. Yeah. Um, what interventions are you looking to implement to make this more profitable? I'm looking at uh, value addition because that's really where we are going when we talk of agribusiness. We are farming just about everything horticulture, so to provide uh, support services to the farmers in terms of what seeds, in terms of what fertilizers, in terms of what pesticides, if any, in terms of market, because we are talking of small-scale farmers who have no bargaining power in the market individually, but banded together they do have, who may not be able to do value addition individually, but together they form an economic block. Mm -hmm. So those are the issues I'm talking about. And it's about bananas, it's about uh, things like uh, the um, 
arrowroot, sweet potatoes. It's about our coffee. It's about our tea. It's about rice. It's about everything. Not to mention tomatoes, fruits. Kirinyaga is a land of milk and honey. Just about everything grows. Right. And the people are really hard working. It's about helping people to turn their toil into a benefit to them. Okay. Yes. Um, Kirinyaga is one of the counties where we are certain that there will be a woman governor uh, come August. And, and I suppose that is uh, very positive and forward thinking of the people of Kirinyaga. And you're yeah. facing off uh, with uh, former CS Anwa Igoro. Why do you believe you are the better choice? That's about the better choices the people of Kirinyaga to make whatever. But I'm saying I've been a good steward of public resources wherever I've been. I've been a minister for water, an infrastructure ministry. At the time, the economy of the country was just beginning to wake up. Remember, we took over when the granaries were empty. And with very little money, I was able to transform water. I was able to fight graft in water, to bring down the cost of infrastructure in water. I was able to transform and bring order. And I have a record of delivering, not only in water, but as an MP, managing the CDF, and even before CDF, getting money from partners and getting development in Gishogo during the Kanu days when no development was coming. And I think even in the justice docket, I delivered, laying the foundation for the Constitution and also laying the foundation for the laws that helped the coalition government to function. All right. So Thank you're talking you. about track record on the one oh, hand, yes. but you've also said a good steward of resources. In yes. a way, you believe yes. she cannot be? I am not comparing myself to anyone. I'm giving, when you go for an interview, you don't say that I left somebody else sitting there, they are like this and that. You talk about you. I'm marketing product, Martha Karua, not any other product in the market. I have no business talking about any other product except product Martha Karua. But even in marketing a product, yes. that product yes. has to be compared to, uh, quote unquote, what else is on the shelf. And look at yes. this, uh, uh, for instance, uh, Waiguru, who is, of course, on a, a, a Jubilee ticket, and you're yeah. on a Nakenye ticket, yeah. um, she, at uh, the primaries, got 100,632 votes. That's compared to a total... Um, Registry, I believe, about two hundred and six no. thousand or so. Three hundred fifty-one thousand voters. So you believe that there is significant room for you? Not just significant room. I'm saying even the one hundred. I'm looking for every vote in Kirinyaga, and I'm saying I was not part of that race. If I was on the ticket, be a different. I story. believe that the outcome would be different. Therefore. I'm going boldly looking for every vote in Kirinyaga and I hope to convince her too that her vote ought to be for Martha Karua. Oh, yes. right. oh, yes. um, she also <laughs> by virtue uh, of being that's ambitious, uh, mm. by virtue of being a Jubilee candidate one can expect that she will be uh, receiving the support of the president himself when he comes to campaigns that he'll be on the ground you know as he tours campaigning and saying vote Jubilee in, in Kirinyaga, including the gubernatorial seat, you can imagine that then she would also have the, the sizable backing of this uh, giant party uh, that Jubilee is uh, and its resources. How do you feel um, sitting compared to that kind of support? I feel quite confident. Mm -hmm. I'm not a spokesperson for His Excellency the President, but last Saturday, he embraced all parties that are supporting him. You saw him at Kenya's National Delegates Convention. You saw him at the conventions of various other parties. The president was giving a message that all those who support him are part of his group, that he is the president of all of us and the candidate of all of us. You saw him donning a Kenya uh, cap just like he don't a chap chap cup when he got there. The message I read, mm -hmm. our supporters read, and any right thinking member of society would read, mm -hmm. is that he has embraced all of us. We are all supporting him at the apex. Down at the bottom of the pyramid, 
it's everybody for themselves. Everybody must market themselves. And so, so the message is clear. Mm -hmm. No longer hanging on the coattails of the president. Of the president. We market ourselves and jointly we market him. I am totally undissed by anything else. It, it yeah. sounds like you, you're not expecting the president in Kirinyaga saying... No, he will vote, come. ...vote Anu Waigoro. She's on a jubilee ticket. I'll Would be you be surprised if that happened? Let me tell you, I'm ready for any eventuality. Okay. But... What message would a right-thinking member of society read from the president's visit to the various national delegates convention of other parties? I even reciprocated. I went to the Jubilee yes. one myself. Right. Right. So what message? It reminds me of 2007 when Kibaki was supported by a host of coalition parties, mm -hmm. including Kanu Den, which was then led by President Uhuru Kenyatta for a candidate at either the gubernatorial level and nationally at the presidential level, every vote counts. Mm -hmm. All right. I do not see the president giving any language that suggests that any votes are lesser than the others. All votes matter to him. So the message to anybody hoping to hang on the coattails of the president is that we all support him and at the lower level, look for your own votes. All right. And I'm ready to look for my votes. Okay. Yeah. I, and this <laughs> particular race, the Kirinyaga gubernatorial race, has been pegged as one of those battle of the titans, if you mm. like. Yeah. But this is going to be uh, perhaps one of the most scintillating um, uh, gubernatorial races that we will see. Do you share a similar opinion? Do you believe it's a high stakes uh, race in Kirinyaga? And if so, why? Every race is a high stakes race to the candidates involved. Even an MCA race is a high stakes race to the electorate and to the candidates involved. So for me, it's a race just like any other. It's high stakes to the candidates involved, to the electorate involved. But do you yeah. see perhaps uh, the, the fascination, if you like, with, an, with the, uh, you know, the names that will be on the battle? Two very strong, vocal, prominent, uh, perhaps some of the most prominent female political leaders in the country going head to head. I don't know about most prominent because I know others who are even more prominent. But I'm saying this. Why the fascination, may I ask? Men are always battling against each other. In fact, it's the order of the day. Mm -hmm. Prominent men are battling against each other. Why the fascination? Are the women in the wrong place to be battling each other? To me, I say no. We are candidates just like the others. I'm going to it without any kind of whatever that this is a different race. Right. I've been in many races, and this is just another of those races. It's high stakes to the candidates involved and to the electorate. You were uh, associating uh, rather closely with Nasser for a significant period of time. You, yes. You were a very strong critic of this particular administration. Yes. And right at the point where people almost expected you to be named in the uh, uh, top rank and file, if you like, of Nasser, you pulled this big about turn and say you're supporting President Uhuru Kenyatta's re-election. What informed that decision? May I first say, I was never part of NASA. NASA was formed the other day. So it would be right for you to tell oh, me I, your I was part of the opposite. Never part of God. Not part of it. I said associating. Associating, yes. Right, right. And I was associating as part of the opposition. Mm -hmm. By definition, the Constitution places the politics of this country on two sides. The side in government and the opposition. And I was rightly in opposition as a party that had not gained power in 2013. And I played my role, my constitutional mandate, in, as an opposition member. And the role of the opposition is not to be a praise choir for the government. It's to keep the government on its toes. And the opposition owes Kenyans a duty to do that. I did that. And, and when the election, for more. When election for time more for came, in the opposition. yes, when election time came, mm -hmm. people do realignment. I'm no different. I took all factors into consideration. We also took in-house and we dis made decisions individually and collectively. And it's not a surprise. If you remember, 
or if I may remind viewers, no person has ever become president in this country without sharpening their teeth in the opposition. Our first president, Jomo Kenyatta, right. was opposition to the colonial government together with Mau Mau. Mm -hmm. He then became president. When he became president, President Moi then in Kadu was the first critic of his government until he crossed over. He then became president. The third president, President Kibaki, was a critic of Moi for 10 years. I was in his party. Mm -hmm. Then we took over and Uhuru then now became the, the opposition. opposition right. He was a great critic of Kibaki. And so you but around 207, unusual. Yes, I'm just trying mm -hmm. to educate, to, to remind Kenyans mm -hmm. that sometimes we forget. Mm -hmm. When you are in the opposition, you play a critical role. Mm -hmm. Had we not sustained as opposition during the Kanu regime, the changes that came and with them growth of the economy would not have happened. Every opposition plays its role and it's right for politicians to rethink closer to the election or to a momentous occasion to realign and we are realigned after looking at everything together and I've said this I've played in both teams and I consciously chose to support the president and his team for re-election. And, and I want to get into, just break that into yeah. a little bit more detail, but before we get there, when you keep saying all factors considered, there are those who were surprised, whereas you say it should not have come as a surprise, were surprised by your decision, and yeah. may even go as far as arguing that that decision was not based on the principles that we know Martha Carrera to stand for, but this was more informed by political survival. How do you respond to that? Principle is not about which side. And I've said there's no side consisting of saints in politics. Principles is about either my, I'm against corruption and I'm for good governance, whichever side I support, I go with my principles. So I'm intact as a person, my beliefs, my stand, but I've looked at both teams and I have taken a choice. My choice may not be necessarily everybody's choice, but it is my choice. And one and can only imagine you, you yeah. would choose to play, it, you would be batting for a winning team. Um, yeah. That would be your hope. Yeah. So what is it that you believe uh, then distinguishes uh, President Kenyatta from the opposition leader, Roy Odenga, or rather the Jubilee team from the NASA team? I do not want to um, talk about anybody as such. But I want to say this, I considered carefully and I said I want to play with the president's team, all things considered. And take it from me, I know lots of the inside of the both teams and I chose consciously. And I said because w while criticizing the government, we also must offer solutions. And if you play back clips of when we criticized over corruption, over many other shortcomings. Oh, more often than not, NAC Kenya has also always offered solutions. Therefore, when I'm playing in the president's team, I'm ready in-house to offer the same criticism and the same solutions. Because as a, Kenyans, a Kenyan, I'm called upon to point whatever sh areas of weaknesses and to suggest solutions to them. I've chosen my team. The team I was in before wasn't perfect as well but there was a way mm -hmm. you communicate when you're a member of the team there are certain communications you do in-house as opposed to outside Publicly. yes okay so i'm committed to the team i'm playing in and uh, to strengthening that team in every way that i can so that my team wins because you go to a team hoping your team wins right i'll be doing the best i can to ensure my team wins and I'm doing. Uh, do you believe that Kenyan politicians, however well-meaning, yeah. can avoid the very present and regrettable ethnic undertones that determine who is elected? Yeah, we can avoid. Firstly, by our utterances, by the things that we do, because we must not discriminate. Whether you are opposition or government, you must avoid having any ethnic undertones, whether by way of campaigning, by way of whatever, we must preach cohesion. Remember, 
the slogan for my party is one Kenya, one nation, one people. We want to live that every day. That you're rooting for unity, mm -hmm. you want to differ on principle, and you also want to fight on issues, not on basis of ethnicity. And wherever I stand, that's what I do. Whether when I was in the opposition, when I'm in government, I'm the same person. Martha, there could be somebody watching right now yeah. who's saying that the real reason why Martha Karua had to shift yeah. very uh, um, loudly, if you like, to support the president is because she's running for a seat in the heart of central Kenya and cannot be seen to be supporting any other than the imagined preferred candidate of the region who is the president. Anybody thinking that way, they are perfectly entitled to think. I'll differ with them. I'll say all factors considered, like I started, and I'll say this, that if the sole reason was so that I get support, then the easiest thing would have been to let now Kenya fold up and get into Jubilee. I didn't do that. So I chose a team, but I also chose mm -hmm. the house I'm used to. Okay. Yeah. Um, y you've been described as uh, the Iron Lady, as Kenya's Margaret Thatcher. Well, what do you think of such descriptions? You just have to let people do what they want to do. Whatever description I'm given doesn't change who I am. So you've got to allow people to enjoy themselves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. but, but do you, do you, are those, uh, you know, descriptions that you in one way or another resonate with? At some point you were even described as the only man in President Kibaki's government. I would like to hear a man, a male politician described as the Iron Man or as the only woman when they <laughs> cry or do something different. It is not right that women are given labels or when they think in quotes they are praising you, they call you a man. Let's start getting used that space, whether political, economical, social, a shared space between the genders, that all platforms belong to both women and men. And there's nothing unusual for a woman excelling in politics, a woman excelling economically or socially. So as the media, as uh, players on this uh, space, we must start making it the norm that we are on shared space. There is no universe for men only or for women only. And yet I, I suppose uh, even part of what may have informed the term, uh, which some may think uh, it was uh, derogatory to, uh, to a, you know, a measured extent, would be the fact that at a time when such few women had very prominent positions. Not only were you uh, uh, a woman doing what many did not believe women could do, but yeah. you were perhaps excelling beyond what uh, men who have held these positions for a long time would do. Would you say you are, you feel cut from a different cloth in some way? No, I just feel me. I don't feel cut from any different cloth. I consider myself a regular person and there are many women and men like me in this country. If you just close your eyes, go back to your village or your neighborhood, if you've been raised in town, you will see women and men who excel daily in very difficult circumstances. And you will see very many women who do not have a public voice, yet they are the pillars of their homes. Mm -hmm. And there are many, many men, r leaders today, who if they had not been led well by their mothers in their upbringing, they wouldn't be where they are. Any male re leader today, the best, have been led by their mothers first and the world second. So if yeah. it's time we started recognizing this, those narratives are kept to the back. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. election, we, we are expecting to see uh, more women yes. elected, simply even by virtue of the fact that women are going for uh, slots that they did not vie for yes. uh, in the previous election. But even with, with that uh, hopeful tone, there is a concern that it will not be enough to, to be at least a third um, of the representatives who will form, um, you know, uh, pub who will behold public office uh, come August. Do you believe that because of social norms and the times that it takes to transform a society that women's rights at least on the leadership and, and public service front will still have been relegated to something that is progressive 
let me say that things are changing. When I started as a member of parliament or pledged into politics about two decades, over two decades ago, it wasn't the way it is. And I'm very proud that lots of women all over Kenya have been elected being told, go be our Martha Karua. So whatever space a woman occupies, whether it's a prominent newscaster like you, and a good one at that, Thank you. whether it's at another space, these spaces used to be occupied by only men, by the way. So we are helping our children, the young generation, internalize that space is shared. We have women rising in the army, women rising everywhere. Mm -hmm. In this particular election, mm -hmm. there are more women vying than in any other election. Yes, they are not enough. I share the concern with you that women may not form one-third of all the candidates presented by the parties. Even as NAC Kenya, even though we have a policy of 50-50, we were not able to get enough women interested to actualize that policy. We may end up being slightly below the one-third in the total number of candidates. Mm -hmm. But I'm happy to say I've seen participation of more women seeking to get to the ballot as MCAs and at all other levels than in any other election. And I think society is also electing more women and our chances increase when more of us are on the ballot paper. So I think society is changing, changing very fast. I would uh, pray that our members of parliament hear the call by the president to actualize the not more than two-thirds gender rule as mandated by the constitution to remember they're paving way for their daughters. They're paving way to unleash the full potential in terms of human resource for Kenya's leadership and growth. Because when you have all the resources that Kenya has to offer of the both genders, then we develop faster. Finally, do you still have presidential ambitions? I am right now so focused on the gubernatorial post that I cannot focus on anything. Right now, my eyes are on Kirinyaga gubernatorial seat a step at a time. A step closer perhaps to a, step, a presidential run? A step at a time. And then we see what life has to offer. And yes. we'll cover it. Yes. Thank you, Martha. Thank Kuru, you. For your time. We're taking a short break. We're back mm -hmm. with the sport after this.